All right, JHK here for Sports Kita, and join me right now is UFC featherweight Kai Kamaka. Kai, it's good to get you back on, man. Short notice again, man. This is your third time around. How are you feeling? Good, good. That's my name. Short notice <laughs> is my <laughs> my middle name. Yeah, for sure, man. I remember we spoke a, a couple months back, and you told me if you're a killer, you're a killer at any moment. This is a pr- perfect example of it. Take us through how you got this fight put together. Um. So, I mean, if you've seen my last fight, um, you know, I I don't know how, I mean, I feel like I won. I still feel the same. Um, I acted the same as if I did win after my fight. I conducted myself in a way that, um, you know, a winner would. Even if it's a sore loser, I fully feel like I won that fight still yet. But at the same time, as a competitor, I didn't stop. I didn't stop training. I took, like, there wasn't a day that I wasn't in the gym, for one. After the fight, every single day I was in the gym. I took off for maybe like three days and still showed up. I got like I got a tattoo for like three days straight. But I was in the gym at, every day that even when I went, even when I was getting a tattoo, I stopped by the gym. And just mentally, mentally, I was always in the gym. Mentally, I was always getting better. Um, yeah, it's hard to hard to take a step back when you know when you won your last fight. You know, when you see the the Korean Superboy, the news that he's injured, he's out of the Danny Chavez fight. Danny Chavez, he's on a plane to Vegas, so everybody's thinking like he must have something in the works. You're on Twitter. I think you teed something out, and I said, man, I could see Kai stepping in right here because he's in Vegas. I know he's been training. Like you said, you've been training, and you're ready. You kind of want to get that bad taste out your mouth. Is that is that the feeling you have right now? No, I... I already took the fight. Well, that's why I was tweeting, but I don't think nobody got it. <laughs> um, I took the fight. I took the fight during the first fight of the night. Mm-hmm. Um, they called. My phone was ringing, and my manager was calling me. That call lasted 45 seconds. Um, you know, I'm I'm not Korean, but I think I'm the Hawaiian Superboy. <laughs> well, you, know, you guys have. You know, you guys are very, very young looking for for your age. So yes, it could be but, true. Yeah, I um, I took the fight already. I, I just nobody was kind of catching on. Um, I took the I took the fight. The fight was uh, ag- already agreed to, um, and it just I just took a while to get announced. A few days. Well, I'm sure Danny already knew um, ahead of time. And yeah, that, so I mean, I already took the fight. It was a no-brainer, and I was already, like I said, I didn't take any breaks. I trained hard all the way through, and I was, you know, just because of the search- situation that happened in my last fight, I lost, right? So I don't have any negotiating power. Um, so the plan was to stay ready, no matter who it was. And I was kind of looking at some fights that interested me, and you know how whatever COVID injuries happen. And that was one one fight that I circled, um, and I didn't think it would come, of course. But there was a, a list of names, and uh, on that list of names, I had Danny Chavez versus Duho Choi. Um, just for some reason, was, those are two guys that I wanted to face, a winner, a loser, no, no matter what. And now I get to step in for that fight. You you know you felt like you won your last fight, and on the record, it's a loss because of. The scorecards, the judges scored it in favor of TJ Brown. Does uh-huh. that? How does that affect you though? Like, how does that? Does that linger with you? Is that something that affects you a lot in training and and even mentally heading into this fight? No, actually, I mean the only thing that it affected me was my family, my bank account, because everybody in the world, as far as the guys that I talked to, were just confused. Like, wait, how did you lose? You know. So now I just gotta work even harder. Um, that's it, and um, that's that. I was there was no confusion on what I was doing as far as technical side or whatever. It was just um, we. There's only two people that screwed up that night, and that's the only that's the mindset. Um, you know, a lot of people have, and which reassures me that I'm not just being a sore loser. I mean, and I don't care. I was being called a sore loser. That's that's the name of this game. Um. So, I mean, we're fighting, you know, it's not like, um, yeah, we're fighting. So, I mean, I don't care. I'll be a a sore loser every time. But it was, it was mentally, the only thing that was mentally draining is not knowing what is next. You know, like as far as like, when's my next fight? I just got to wait. You know, I'm the guy that lost. 
So, but obviously, I go up in competition. You know, that's that's the way I look at it. There's a reason why I got put in this spot. That the reason why my my uh, my number was called is because they feel that I won. So I get to beat the guy that just kind of beat me. I guess I go up in competition. It is it is kind of crazy how that all works out. And when you look at Danny Chavez, man. How do you break him down? Like, what type of fighter you do you see? Um, I don't know. I see somebody lot lots of explosiveness. Um, ball and all. I just see a face. I mean, I was gonna take the fight regardless of who it was. Uh, so I mean, but he's explosive. Maybe like a Lineker, you know, in his own right. Um, yeah, he he's he's good at what he does. He can kick. Um. But I feel like I can do it all. Now, you know, you've been in this transition from, you know, from moving from Hawaii to Las Vegas. And it's and it's taken some time to get your, your bearings, right? And and your development with your new coaches at Extreme Couture. How how, have you, how do you feel about the last couple of months and, and how much you have, you know, developed and, and gotten your footing with the team? Um, I mean, I think I'm, I'm way better than my last, my last fight already. Um just with my coaches that's i dealt with a loss with them i dealt with adversity in a fight which is um and yeah i just got to grow i mean I, i'm getting used to the vegas summer you know like everything's i'm 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 a lot more accustomed to las vegas and my team um i have a, i have a better system where i'm i'm just more used to it um i, I would say as far as this point all right well i've seen that you know you're getting a lot of work with a lot of bodies out there so who are the who are the guys that you work with mainly day in and day out over there um to, i mean jeremy kennedy mads burnell um mads burnell is fighting the same night as i am so i mean he, he's putting in the work and i've been i that's what was kind of keeping me keeping me on track is um you know helping him out and yeah, um, Jeremy Kennedy is one of my main guys, um, and then Boston Salmon. Those, those are kind of my main guys at 45. Dan Ige, um, but those are, those are pretty much my main bodies that uh, that I have. You you did get some sessions with uh, Sterling too, you know, and he's coming back from injury. How how has those sessions gone? Good, good. Um, we actually spoke uh, about a few weeks ago about um, getting more work in for his next camp. Um, yeah, I've, I've helped. I've I've got to go with him uh, a few times. I've actually sparred him like two days after COVID, uh, like two days after I I was at a t out of a ten day quarantine. I showed up to the gym, and then I walk in, and Eric goes, "Um, yeah, Aljo said he um he wanted to move around on Saturday." I you know, when you hear him move around, especially today, you know that that just means spar, and. I, if if I take last minute fights, I definitely I'm gonna spar at any moment. So I ended up sparring like two days after a ten day quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> I was dead. That's crazy, crazy. Now, you know this fight, man. It's a big fight for you. You know, what I mean, you're coming off back to back setbacks. So, what what can we expect from you? You know, like what what kind of Kai can we see? Um, I mean, more free. Uh. You know, after a 12-week camp, you kind of, there's a lot of stress. Um, you know, the mental side of it is that you dedicated three months of your life to to that fight. And then, uh, yeah, you, you you know, it's built up to where you got to make it happen. You got to make it happen. And, you know, I, um, I don't think I, w I was as free as I wanted to be in there that last fight. Um, but that's it. I mean, just using my whole, my whole um, arsenal. And in a way where it's um, it's not being used and it's being rushed with adrenaline, which which that last fight kind of kind of did. Um, I've gotten a lot better in my time just as a uh, as an athlete here, and because of extreme couture and just because of time in general, I, I it's helped me get better. So I mean, I want the the time that I've had after this last fight to help me get better. Uh, which it has, because I, I didn't take a step. I didn't even um, step off the brakes. I mean, my cardio is better, it, and 
the fight, yeah, the fight wasn't ideal at two weeks' notice. But I mean, when is life ever, you know? When the when if the stars usually that the stars align more often than not, you know, you just can't be staring at your feet when it does. Um. So I mean, yeah, just expect. You know, I'm free. I'm, I, I, I'm my... Now, moving on, you know what I mean? Like your cousin, Ray Cooper, he's going to come back uh-huh. and, and he's going to be fighting in the playoffs. Roy McDonald yeah. is the first fight. Ray really wanted that fight too because I remember talking to him a couple of months back and he gets it. When you look at it stylistically, what is the difference maker, do you think, for Ray in that fight? Um, I don't know. I just... I mean, shoot, as far as styles it, it um you know like me me and him we it's not um it's not a matter of well, i don't know it's kind of hard to say i mean we, yeah i mean you can all, you can say we have the same style just different attributes you know what i mean um this guy is probably the hardest punch i've ever seen in my life um so i, I mean don't we all wish we had that power but as far as mentality wise um I mean, I just I don't see how how he'll beat he'll beat um Ray. So you think that power that he might not be able to handle it? Yeah, I just well, I just think what what he his best ways to beat Rada um Rada's strong there and and he can you know he can punch he can wrestle and he's at he's at the top of his game right now. Um, I mean that last fight showed. That you know he, he can fight any type of fight and he's grown a lot since the 2008 season itself, especially with a lot of success. He's grown with um grown with the success. He has to mature with the success. So um yeah, I think I think he has. I just think he has it. Um he has everything to beat Rory. All right, all right. Now uh, upcoming, you know, later this year. UFC 266, you got Alex Volkanovski defending his title against Brian Ortega, your division. How do you see that fight playing out? Do you feel like Ortega has enough to to take out the the, the more strategic Volkanovski? Yeah, I think so. I mean, um, I don't know, it's kind of hard to say. Ortega has been in championship fights, at least. He likes to play like tit for tat and like win rounds rather than the Ortega that took out Chad Mendes, Jose Aldo, so he's obviously shown he's, he's able to make adjustments and win, just win in general um, with IQ. And Brian Ortega has showed leaps and bounds in his stand-up. Maybe stylistically it matched up perfect with Korean Zombie, but, I mean, he definitely showed improvements, you know, um, that you cannot take away from him. So, I don't know, I think it's going to be a good one, but I do think that um, Ortega does have what it takes to do. Um, beat Volkanovski. Do you would you line up Holloway next with that winner, or do you think Holloway should fight Rodriguez or maybe even the Korean Zombie? Yeah, oh, it's hard, right? Like, I mean, Max. It's it's. It's a hard situation as far as the way it looks for Max because he did again for the right to win, right? It's like anybody who fights Max is like almost getting a gift, you know what I mean? Like, um, they're, they're, they're more of the upside. I mean, against the champion twice and then, um, he had dominant performance over, um, uh, Ortega. So it's, yeah, I, I don't know. I think maybe, maybe, uh, Maybe zombie. Uh, I think Yair Rodriguez just been out too long to earn a shot at Max. He's like, almost like the uncrowned champ. So I mean, he's like the the Diaz right now of of the 45 weight class. You know, he can kind of pick and choose what he wants whenever he wants because because of the, his performances against the guys that are fighting for a title. The NCAA man, they just recently changed the rules for sponsorships for college athletes, and some of these man, these ball players are getting paid. Man, they're signing some massive deals. You were a collegiate athlete. Imagine if you were able to get sponsors, man. How much of a difference would that have made for you? I mean, it it would have, but 
shoot, I can't even get those sponsorship deals and I'm in the UFC. You know what I mean? Like, what the heck? Um, that's what, that's, that's what's crazy. Like, um, I'm in the UFC, a lot of guys in the UFC. Um, I feel like we should be able to, um, have that kind of pool for ourselves, uh, being UFC athletes, you know? Um, I think, I don't know. I think America is just different, man. We just appreciate, um, we, we appreciate college football way too much. Um, I mean, not way too much. I mean, just a lot more than any other, you know? football in general here is that's that's the sport that's the that's the mecca of athletics is is football you know what i mean so um yeah i don't know it's just way different it's cool to see though it's cool to see but i mean reggie bush gotta get his heisman back <laughs> <laughs> for real huh? a lot of lot of lot of uh athletes huh they gotta well, get it well, back I mean, especially, especially now you know what i mean yeah like how can you not like these guys are signing crazy stuff. I mean, and it was good to see like one of the kids from Hawaii. I mean, Hawaii's not a, not a like a household name as far as like um, that could draw a lot of money for certain athletes. But they you know, their their quarterback signed with a uh, kind of a local bank there, which which looks pretty good. I mean, that's probably he's probably a Hawaii quarterback. Is probably the highest, gonna be the highest uh, profile athlete in Hawaii. So I mean, it's pretty cool to. For him to see, for yeah, for to see that happen to a local boy, and also like those, like some of the the basketball players, they lost their national championships because of those endorsement deals too. That are not even they're not even endorsement deals; they're just getting you know money. But they're just yeah from from like um, boosters or whatever. Yeah, yeah, and that's sponsorship. The same thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's that's sponsorship. You're right. So I man, mean, hopefully it, they they do it right for these athletes, man. And uh, like you said. The, the you know MMA is still growing, so eventually it will grow to a point where you know those sponsorships will come out and and be massive numbers for a lot of the fighters. For yourself, man, this fight coming up is your fourth fight in the UFC. Is this like are you fighting out your contract? Is that what the situation right now, or you know did you sign a new deal? What happened with when you signed the short notice fight? Oh, uh, I'm just fighting out my contract. Uh, I think that's you know that's that's the that's. That's what put me in the hole for that last fight. Um, that's what kind of changed the trajectory of of things happening. That's what frustrated me. That's the side that frustrated me. It wasn't wasn't of if I won or lost. I mean, everybody knows. Everybody everybody feels the same. The only thing that changed is the way they gotta treat the situation. The way how much money they gotta pay me. Um, how they match me up next. You know. So that's why I stayed ready. Yeah, man, it's a bold move, man. You're fighting out your contract on short notice. That's what the sport is about. Like you said, if you're a killer, you're ready at any moment. Kai, appreciate the time, man. Have a, have a good rest of the camp, and we'll see you in the cage on July 31st. Thank you so much. Thank you, John. Always nice talking to you.